Azrock has drafted us for help with an extreme overclocking. I don't know anything about extreme overclocking or liquid nitrogen or anything, but we're going to do it with Splave. Uh, they've summoned us to try and pull it to 10 gigahertz and crash their system. All right, we're not going to be able to do 10 gigahertz, but I'm joined by Brian from Techia City. Hey, man. How you doing? How's it going? How's everyone doing in the Level 1 Tech's audience? And also, this event is really good, and Wendell is covering a lot of the good stuff, especially Sapphire Rapids today. Yeah, Sapphire Rapids on ASRock's W790 motherboard. Uh, there's a lot going on at the show, but Intel and AMD are conspicuously absent. Can you be conspicuously absent? I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? Because it's just like none of them want to really present anything new even though even if they presented like an nvidia did it's at least it's something so i'm like we wanted something we want amd intel we want something out of you guys even if it's even if it is bad <laughs> i mean sapphire rapids is not nearly as bad as it's made out to be and we're gonna go at least we're gonna go over 6.9 gigahertz we're not gonna be able to do 10 gigahertz but more than 6.9 probably 7.1 maybe 7.2 maybe 7.3 probably 7.2 and we're going to be running everyone's favorite, Cinebench R23. We're doing things with liquid nitrogen today on Sapphire Rapids. Who, who wouldn't be excited? I'm here with Splave and Nick from the ASRock Performance team, and they're going to show us how to get the performance out of Sapphire Rapids using liquid nitrogen. And also, Brian! What is happening? All right, so the name of the game here is to try to get our Sapphire Rapid CPU, this is the 16 core four memory channel one, up to six gigahertz. 6.1 gigahertz is what we've been able to achieve with a Cinebench R23 score of about 46,000. It's very, very impressive to see that level of performance out of uh, Intel Sapphire Rapids. And yeah, I just, I don't know. This is uh, ASRock's new workstation, W790 motherboard. And we're just casually running at minus 69, but we've already had it to Minus 102, I think, is the, the lowest temperature that I saw. And this thing is stable enough to run Cinebench, it's stable enough to run Y Cruncher, stable enough to run a lot of other benchmarks. So, I, when can I get this in a desktop form factor? So the reason we use a Xeon platform for this is because it's 16 performance cores. There's no performance cores, efficiency cores, it's all performance cores. Normally these CPUs show up in server where efficiency is kind of important, but this CPU is already sucking down north of 600 watts in order to be able to do this demo. And again, that's on liquid nitrogen. So it would use even more power if it wasn't for the aforementioned liquid nitrogen. Did I mention liquid nitrogen? We're, we're using registered error correcting DDR5 memory. Uh, it's running at 6600. We did as high as 6800. 6600, 6400 seems to be the sweet spot. <laughs> Intel never really intended for Sapphire Rapids memory controller to operate at below zero temperatures, so it's got kind of a sweet spot that it wants to be in when we're doing these kind of benchmarks. It's up to 6.9 gigahertz in CPU-Z. What is this madness? <laughs> 7 gigahertz, ah! They're well, just saying, uh, for the sake of it, they're just saying the CPU could go this high, but as soon as you put any sort of strenuous load on the CPU, we are going to get a blue screen. But it is interesting to see that. But it is interesting to see these numbers coming out on CPU Z. Oh, and we need firewall protection. Such. <laughs> the Windows firewall is like, what are you doing with the 7.2 gigahertz clock on this crazy platform? <laughs> it's not bench stable, but hey, it's a number in CPU Z, and we'll take it. Yeah, man, I can get my CPU up to 10 gigahertz. Oh, really? Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, let's just try it. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth a shot. We went for glory. <laughs> Why do you say that again? <laughs> it's dead, Jim. <laughs> yeah, so the overclocking is pretty insane, but what about the rest of the show? What's the most interesting thing you've seen at Computex so far? I would, like, this is going to sound weird, but I would say the cases from Montech, they really impressed me. They had just... Uh, value but also new and so it's like for me that's the best is when you get value and new and it's like awesome as well as some of the motherboards here I I mean people might think our oh, motherboards a little bit boring but I really like some of the motherboards that were coming out especially that Z790 lightning that was actually pretty cool like there's so many of you that are like why are motherboards so expensive yeah we get it they are you're not wrong 
And I think motherboard manufacturers hear you and or they have a huge inventory of parts they're looking to move. And so maybe the motherboard prices are, are coming down and things are being shaved off of motherboards. And they started with RGB and the heat sinks. And the Tai Chi light too. Yeah. That's that's the biggest one like you're talking about. Yeah. So the Tai Chi light looks like it's going to impress a lot of people too. Uh, high end overclockers too. Literally the same motherboard just without the accoutrement. Yeah, but that's good. Maybe maybe AM5 and LGA1700 as mainstream platforms with more affordable motherboards. Maybe that'll be a thing. I like the desk meat for that as well. Yeah, you're you're really into the desk mates. I um I pick them up, and because I go like my ITX solutions are usually just hack jobs. The panels are missing and everything, so I'm usually into make just beefing them through the roof. So yeah, but the the desk minis are good if you just want that actually value as well. They they pack the value in with that. Yeah, I mean they're like two hundred dollars. You're not going to put a K series CPU in there, and they're they're definitely they're not the fastest, but they're an entirely reasonable system. I would put the twelve. The 12900 no K against pretty much any 10th or 11th gen CPU from prior generations any day of the week. And if you don't need the top end GPU, you can deal with a smaller GPU. It's a really great platform that's the whole thing with the power supply is $200. My, my thinking on that is maybe like a 4060 Ti and a 13500 undervolted. You're going to be using no power and then drill some holes for a handle. <laughs> like that's just like, I think that would actually be extremely practical. I was also really excited that we're seeing a lot of AM5 server platform stuff, so maybe I can have a 7900 No X for my home server. That'll be nice. Yeah, I I think the um, definitely for me this was eye opening in that I saw the HEDT, and I didn't even know it really existed, but now it exists in the form of Xeons and W790 motherboards. That was actually pretty crazy to see because I was just always focused on the 13900K and the 7950X, and so I'm actually going to be branching out now looking at both these options from AMD and Intel. And the weirdest thing is there, I think they kind of like they've given up on X299's successor, and AMD's kind of given up on Threadripper's successor, and they're just like, all right, if you want it, we got it, but it's server-grade stuff now. And Splave called our 16-core overclockable monster uh, server light, and I think that's probably a pretty good description. Four DDR5 memory channels requires registered error-correcting memory, but with that, you get two terabyte memory capacities. So, you know, again, I'm really surprised that Intel has been so conservative with this uh, platform and at least marketing around it and that sort of thing. I mean, we did hit 7.2 gigahertz, albeit at 800 watts. It's about 50 watts a core. That's about what we're seeing on Alder Lake and Raptor Lake. It's crazy to see the power scaling on the efficiency, like how that works. When he just ex when he described it flat out, like going from this temperature to this temperature, you're literally halving the power consumption at the same voltage and the same temperatures. I was just like, that hit me hard. I was like, whoa. As soon as we get to nano nanoscale manufacturing, all of those superconductivity problems will go away. And it's now time for us to go away. But that's that actually, speaking of going smaller in that, one thing I've actually been delving into is latency, and it was interesting hearing the guys talking about the latency and going up to the 16p cores on the I/O latency. So yeah. that's something I'm personally looking into. Um, it's something that I'm super passionate about. But uh, just going to give you guys a little bit of a spoiler, maybe. But I'm I'm looking at going back to 10th gen. All right. Well, I got to run. Thank you. Thank you, Wendell. And yeah, it's been a pleasure, guys. This guy is absolutely awesome, not just on the videos, but also on uh, IRL. This guy's a rando. Awesome. I'm just a rando. I'm going to try and get him on a live stream as well. Friendly neighborhood computer janitor. All right. <laughs> See ya.